يا شباب It's been nearly two months since the horrifying events of the Hamas terror massacre in Israel's south. But here on Road 232, which only recently reopened, there is still an eerie feeling. Terrorists were all over the place, and this gas station in the, in the, in the woods, in the fields, running all over the place and just killing whoever they see. And a lingering smell of hell. We can still smell the burned out trees. We can see the damage of the battles that took place on this road. And anti-tank missiles shot at cars on this road, uh, civilian cars. Fort Sion Leshem, who is now preparing his community to return home, stopping along the way at this gas station and convenience store, is a painful reminder of the nightmare they all endured on October 7th. This yellow gas station was completely taken over by the terrorists. They actually looted the, 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 the yellow store. Uh, thankfully, no one was there. The terrorists went on a murder rampage and then got the munchies. Uh, refrigerator is completely smashed and shot at. See the bullet holes? Hey, you know, terrorists, terrorists like Ben and Jerry's as well. Sion is from Moshav Nave, located just a few kilometers from two enemy borders. We're right in the corner of both Gaza and Egypt borders. We enjoy the benefits of both borders. The terrorists have been on the way to us on October 7th morning. Um, thankfully, thank God they didn't come, they didn't make it. An army group kind of tackled them before they made it here. On October 7th, the playgrounds that are usually a source of joy for over 700 children who live here became a place of sheer terror for up to 20 people in a tiny shelter. Wow, this is not a fun place to have to run into. No. I'm, I'm possible for the three of us. 6.30 a.m., the men are in the synagogue uh, during the, the holiday prayers. Uh, women and kids are in bed sleeping. And 6.30 a.m., the siren goes off, and uh, we're used to that. We know what, what needs to be done. Everyone needs to run to the, to the sheltered rooms. Unfortunately, not all the families actually have sheltered rooms. And uh, unlike what we're used to, one siren, maybe two, a vague boom, you know, out, uh, outside. Um, this is going on for hours and tens and tens of rockets being fired, fired at us. And children uh, have to get out of their bed and run to the streets, out to the playground, to the sheltered rooms in the playground. And this time we're, we're, we're being locked inside for hours and hours. Uh, no door, no window, uh, no electricity and uh, literally waiting for terrorists to come. Yes, this is a giant miracle, not only for the residents and security team, but also for those of us from the Moshav who were called to fight. Even Moshav Nave's head of security, Omri Cohen, says it was a gift of God that they were spared. On October 7th at 6.30 a.m., there were many red alerts and dozens of missiles landing on and near our Moshav. After a while, I started to understand there was a major infiltration of terrorists. Men who had weapons left their wives and children to protect the residents of the Moshav. This bedroom community you see now also became ground zero for ambulances and helicopters, bringing the wounded to get medical attention. And now there's a collection of the most unwanted reminders of the horrors of October 7th. Obviously, we know what this is, but it's just, it's unbelievable that we're sitting here standing and, and holding this like a souvenir. Not, not normal. Yeah, so this is the remaining of a, of, this is the remaining of a rocket that was shot at us together with our rocket collection. Um, and, you know, one of thousands. But Sion says they will no doubt turn this disturbing piece of trash into treasure. We're taking these rockets, cleaning them up, painting them and putting them uh, in our yard, planting flowers. Um, and uh, I guess that's just one little thing that we can do uh, to show the world that, that life is going on. Our enemies are seeking death and we are seeking life. And Moshav Nave is also known for their prized agricultural fields. In fact, Nave and other Moshavs near the Gaza border provide up to 70% of the produce consumed in Israel. And now it's up to volunteers to save the agriculture. What has it been like to, to be here volunteering? It's a, it's a very hard work because uh, most of the time we're doing like four or five people, we're doing the work of uh, 15 to 20 Thai workers. 
that left and it's a uh, daylight to sunset. Truckloads of young local volunteers are lending a hand, as well as this enthusiastic group of Americans from Clifton and Passaic, New Jersey. So we actually landed on Sunday night. We came, uh, we're coming for four or five days, really just to help where we can in the land. You know, a lot of us 6,000 miles away, and we feel like our hearts are here, but we need to actually bring it to action. And these Jersey guys were even rolling up their sleeves and planting chives, no less. And not only are you doing work, but you're doing work with onions, and you're not crying. Exactly. I, I don't. Please make sure that my wife doesn't see this, because then I'll have to do things in the kitchen. That, <laughs> that, won't, that won't work out well. <laughs> Over the next two weeks, residents of Moshav Nave are expecting to finally return to their homes, and the kids will get to go back to school. But they will be living in a new reality. As soon as the army give us the green light, we will be returning back. We, we must take care of our security needs. We have sheltered rooms that we need to build for families who don't have them. Um, we ha we're purchasing equipment for our security team. We need to be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. But regardless, Nave and the nearby communities have a mission to keep Israeli agriculture thriving and flourishing. This area is destined to grow uh, dramatically. And, and the, the amazing communities that live here, that have been here for the past uh, uh, 17, 18 years, are going to be here for the next 100 years and 200 years. And we're just getting warmed up. We're just getting started. We have humongous projects of farming and of, of tourism and of high tech coming up. I want to invite everyone, you, Emily, and all of our viewers and listeners, please come visit us here in the towns of Nave, in the area, in the region. Um, we'll show you around. It's beautiful. In Moshav Nave, Emily Francis, I-24 News.